Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So in the previous four videos, we went over while loops and for loops. In this video, we're going to go over the break and continue statements that we can use within our for loops and while loops. So the first one we have is the break statement, which terminates the loop. And then the next one we have is the continue statement, which skips the current iteration of the loop. So in this video, I'm going to show you some practical examples on how to use the break and continue statements. So let's start with a break statement. So let's say I have a vector of paint colors and they're represented by strings. So I have blue, red, green, white, and black. And I'm looking for a specific paint color. So here we have target color. So what I'm going to do is use a for loop to iterate through this vector of colors and make a comparison each time to see if we have our target color. And if so, we are going to switch the Boolean found to true. Okay. And then at the very end of our code, we are going to print out the results. So we are going to print the color and if it's found, so if this is true, then we are going to print found else not found. So this is the ternary operator in C++, which allows us to condense our if else condition into this structure. So if you need to review on this syntax, I have a video on ternary operators in C++ and I will link it in the video description. All right, so now that you understand what this piece of code is doing, let's say I'm trying to look for the color red. So if I run the program, you can see within our for loop, we are printing out the index and the color at that index. So we have zero blue, one red, two green, three white, and four black. And as you can see, we have red found. Now, if I change this to yellow and then I save and run the program, you can see same thing and then yellow not found. So if I change this back to red and I run the program and you can see we have the list of colors and red found. Now, the thing here is red is at index one. So this is the second value. So logically, if you were looking through a list of items and you found the value, you would stop looking at the rest of the items. So here we can add a break statement so that once we found the color that we're looking for, we do not check the rest of the colors. And this would be very useful if we have more than five values. In this case, we only have five values, but imagine if we had a thousand values, if the value I'm looking for is at index one, which is the second value, there is no need for me to go through all 1000 items. I can just stop right there. So within this conditional statement, if the color at index I is equal to the target color, we're going to set found to true, and then we are going to break. And this is what's known as an early exit. So I have my break statement. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we get zero blue, one red, and then we exit. So red found. And then if I change this to white and I save and run the program, you can see we get zero blue, one red, two green, three white, and we exit. So we do not print out the value black. All right, so that's a classic use case for the break statement. Now let's go over another example. So I'm going to get rid of this. So for this example, let's say that we have a list of paint colors and we are processing orders to buy paint. So for simplicity, let's say that the cost of paint is $10. And over here, I'm going to create two vectors to represent the customer orders. So the first one is going to be which color. So let's create a vector of string and I'm going to call it color order. And let's say we have blue, red, and then the next order, blue again, green, white, black. So we have the first order being blue paint, then red paint, then blue paint again, and then green, white, and black. Now let's create another vector, int, and we are going to call it quantity order. So each index within quantity order is going to correspond with the index at color order. So let's put in some random numbers. So six, 15, nine, five, three, and let's say five again. So basically we have six values here and six values here. So at index zero, we have blue and six. And then at index one, we have red and 15. 
So this is saying 6 orders of blue paint, 15 orders of red paint, 9 orders of blue paint, 5 orders of green paint, and so on. And of course, if you want to buy something, you need a budget. So let's say int budget is equal to $200. So now what I'm going to do is create a for loop that will process the orders. So I'm going to do for size t, i is equal to 0, i less than color order dot size, i plus plus. And I'm going to get two values at the index. So string color is equal to color order at index i, and int quantity is equal to quantity order index i. And then over here, we need to calculate the cost. So the cost of each bucket of paint is going to be $10. So for our first order, if we have six buckets, we multiply it by 10. So the first order is going to cost $60. So here I'm going to do int cost is equal to paint cost times quantity. And let's print this out. So C out order number I and then let's print out the color. And then let's do x and then quantity. And then let's add an end line. So this is going to print out the order number and the color and the quantity. And then afterwards, what I'm going to do is budget minus equal cost. And then let's add another print statement. So C out minus dollar sign cost space and then here we are going to write remaining budget dollar sign budget and end line so let's save and run the program all right so here you can see we have the order numbers but this is a little difficult to read since everything's all crowded together so let's go back and change the code a bit so here i'm just going to print out two new line characters so each one is basically N line, but instead of doing N line, N line twice, I'm just going to do backslash and backslash N. All right, so now let's save and run our program. And as you can see, we have our order numbers here. So if I scroll up, we have order number zero, and that is blue paint, quantity six, and we subtract $60, which is the cost, and we have a remaining budget of 140. And then the second order, order number one, we have 15 orders of red paint, and we do minus 150, and then the remaining budget is $10. So this is a problem, and that is we've run out of budget, but we continue to process the orders, so we end up with a negative balance. So this is not what we want to happen. In real life, if the balance is negative, we should stop processing the orders, so the order should not go through. So let's go and fix that. All right, so over here, right before we subtract the cost from the budget, I'm going to make a check. If cost is greater than budget, I'm going to print stopping order, not enough budget. And let's also add two new line characters. So backslash n, backslash n. And then over here, I'm going to add a break statement. So the moment that we find an order with a cost higher than our budget, we are going to stop. So let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have two orders. So the first one is blue paint, quantity six. So we subtract $60 and we have 140. And then we have order one because we're asking for 15. 15 times 10 is 150. And so we do not have enough. Therefore, we are stopping the order. Now with a break statement, we basically terminate the entire loop. And instead of stopping the orders completely, we can just skip this specific order and purchase more blue paint. So we can purchase nine cans of blue paint. So instead of using the break statement, we can use the continue statement. So the break statement terminates the loop, whereas the continue statement skips the current iteration of the loop. So over here, instead of writing stopping, I will write skipping. And then instead of break, I will put continue. All right, now let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have six orders of blue paint. So minus 60, we have 140 left. And then we have red, so 15 of red. We are going to skip this order because we do not have 150 in our budget. So we move on to the next one and we have blue nine, so minus 90, so we have 50 remaining. Then we have green five, so minus 50. And then we have zero remaining. Then we have white three, 
So we have skipping order, not enough budget, and then black five. So skipping order, not enough budget. So by using continue instead of break, we can still process the rest of the orders and try to buy as much paint as we can. But there's one more issue, and that is we have skipping order, not enough budget, repeating twice here. And if I have more than six orders, let's say I have 10 orders, then each one is just going to skip the order. So there is no need to continue processing the orders if the budget hits zero dollars. So over here, I can add an extra condition statement. So if budget is equal to zero, I'm going to see out out of budget. And then we are going to tell the user canceling remaining orders. And then I'm going to break out of the for loop. All right, so as a recap, we are going to check the budget first. If it's zero, we are going to break out of the for loop and cancel the remaining orders. Otherwise, we are going to check to see if we have enough budget to cover the cost of the current order. If not, we are going to skip the order. So we are going to continue. Otherwise, we process the order and subtract the cost from the budget. So let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we purchased blue paint. So we have minus 60. So we have 140 left. We skip red paint because we do not have 150. So we process the next one, which is more blue paint. So minus 90. So we have 50 left. And then we have green paint. So five orders of green paint. So minus 50. And this leaves us with a remaining budget of zero. So now our next order is three for white paint. And we have out of budget, canceling remaining orders. And so as you can see, after white paint, we completely stop checking the orders. And so we never look at the order for black paint. All right, so this is how you can use the break statement and the continue statement when you are writing loops in C++. So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.